Thioacetone's IUPAC name is 2-propanethione, and you can see the 3-carbon propane part of the molecule there at the bottom, as well as the thione base at the top. Thiones are similar to ketones, except that they have a double-bonded sulfur attached to a carbon. For properties, thioacetone has a lower melting point than a 3-carbon alcohol, but a higher one than the 3-carbon ketone. At room temperature, it's a brown solid, but since it's synthesized at higher temperatures, it's more commonly observed in its brown liquid form. One of the most distinctive characteristics of thioacetone is that it smells really bad. Like, really, really bad. Because thioacetone smells bad, there aren't many reactions involving the compound besides its own synthesis. I guess if you just really, really like smelling things, then you can go about cracking or separating the thioacetone trimer, which interestingly enough has a very pleasant smell that is used in flavorings and fragrances. Cracking it with a lot of heat would ultimately give you three parts of thioacetone. Again, thioacetone doesn't really have any uses that have been studied yet, so here's a fun little history just to explain exactly why that is. So in 1889 in the German city of Freiburg, some chemists in a soap factory were like, yo, what's up home dog, let's crack some thioacetone trimer, and the final product definitely shouldn't not smell not not bad. Uh, yeah, that seems like a totally right idea, bro. Of course, all of this isn't German. But the team separated the molecule and what they experienced was an odor problem beyond their worst expectations. The synthesis of it created an unmatched smell that could be smelled from half a kilometer away almost instantly. The smell caused a mass nausea and people were just yakking left to right and the smell didn't go away for a while. Incidents like this happened a few more times later in the future, but many scientists have learned from the past experiments not to mess with thioacetone. Thank you.